Um, expanding the grid capacity. Historically, grid capacity, it basically grid capacity means have you got enough ability to put generation on the wires that you see outside? And uh, renewable energy projects, because of the preference for larger scale, have challenged the transmission facilities and the smaller versions of transmission, which is known as distribution, has challenged those wires to handle the long reaches of distance that this power has to travel before it gets to where we are today in these rooms. Um, the networks were historically built to work one way, points of origin like at the base of a tree where there might be a large coal plant or a nuclear plant or whatever, putting out huge quantities of power down long and stiff um, transmission lines which then branch to smaller distribution lines which then branch down to residential lines and into your, ho your home. That was the way of, um, that was the, the design for the energy networks, uh, we call that the grid, and power was went, meant to flow from one, one central spot all the way out to the, the branches of the tree, so to speak. Well, that paradigm's all changed now because we can do generation in the city, we can do generation beside the city. Um, so the grid, not being designed for that type of, of change, is going to have to be restructured, and it will be. Uh, and it's going to take a significant amount of investment to do it. We're talking billions of dollars and, no and many years before we get there. But part of the Green Energy Act is, is, is the, uh, the impulse to do that, the will, and they're putting the, their money where their mouth is. And it's pretty exciting. I know that the, uh, the major engineering firms in Ontario are gearing up for a lot of work to be done in the next five years. So the bottom line on this is we've really done it. This is the most um, comprehensive set of energy policies, market restructuring in North America. Uh, we lead, but we don't lead by far because many of the states are moving in this direction as well. One of the, uh, the most exciting moments for me to, in, in seeing this was attending a wind conference in um, Dallas two years ago. And, and I'm just a, a little Canadian, so I'm used to wind conferences. The first one I saw was 200 people in, in Halifax in 2002. And, and, and we were pretty excited when wind energy, um, wind energy conferences, the annual conferences, got to 2,000 people attending in Toronto couple, last year and in Vancouver. That was pretty amazing. But I was absolutely blown away when I saw in Dallas 13,000 delegates. It was just, uh, just huge. And the building we were in was a, about a mile and a half long and it took four hours to walk the whole floor. It was just incredible. So the, the dominant message there is the United States has figured out that there actually is net employment gain from, them from, from stimulating renewables in particular. Well, wind is one example, but they're saying to themselves, geez, we've got something here. We can create a, a, a positive uh, value add by stimulating with whatever mechaniz market mechanisms they choose to use. The end result is people are, are, uh, are employed and, uh, and metal is being moved, which is a very happy result. So. It, from my personal experience, this has been uh, really novel to, to have seen the change in the last two years and have participated in it as a, as a part well, I wouldn't call myself a lobbyist, but I certainly have been able to speak and represent our industry from a number of points of view and have direct contact with, with the architects in the government, various departments, the architects of this change. They've been really open to uh, the industry, and there are a number of industries involved. There's solar, wind, geotherm, et cetera. They've all had chances to explain their needs and, and explain the models of their various uh, economies and, and try to get the government to the point where it understood what, it, what the steps were it had to take. The result has been now the feed-in tariffs with a, a multiplicity of prices for energy depending on the type of energy, the type of production, the scale, the location. There's a, an array of different prices, all designed to give the proponent approximately, a, well, a, a return on investment similar to a regulated, uh, a traditionally regulated return on investment, which would be something between eight and twelve percent. So, uh, they've they've been calibrated to yield uh, decent returns. There's still an ins uh, a need for the developer to be very careful how they implement because you can you can lose all your return if you make mistakes in implementation, but you at least have the opportunity to try. Um, this has been an, 
an amazing experience to be part of the process to, of making it happen, from, even from the idea point of view two years ago when we, we began to tell the government that all the steps they'd taken from 2002 to 2008 were broken. They didn't work. So we have to do something really exciting and different, and they did. So the, the net result has been ex very positive. Um, there are some domestic content requirements within the various industries imposed depending on the industry uh, that are, they were a bit of a surprise to us when they were announced last September. Um, we almost thought they were thought of on an offhand basis. In particular, the, the wind guys were shocked by the requirement of 50% domestic content, which means you have to buy a wind turbine somewhere in Ontario. There are no wind turbine manufacturers in Ontario. Um, solar's doing fine, solar's ramping up. There have been announcements of uh, PV panel uh, companies coming into Ontario. Every week I get emails from folks from China and Germany saying, yeah, we're coming, our, our equipment's gonna be here soon, soon meaning next year. Um, it's exciting to see stuff that, that uh, we can only buy from Texas or Germany or whatever. It's gonna be manufactured here. The plants are gonna be Ottawa or near Ottawa. I would say that uh, Brockville's gonna get a plant. There's gonna be something in the Sault Ste. Marie to uh, North Bay Corridor. That uh, that announcement's coming out within a month or so. Uh, Windsor, Sarnia, they're getting plants. So uh, solar's doing well. Other te technologies such as geotherm, et cetera, they're sorting it out. Uh, it'll happen. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Definitely that's coming along. Uh, I know that solar jobs are going crazy. Uh, just about every every community that I've talked to has all the little companies that p traditionally were eking out an existence selling panels to the you know solar hippies and wind hippies, they've now suddenly had uh, to, to hire people. So that's all very good news. Uh, Samsung, major Korean uh, man manufacturer, they've undertaken to build a, so a um, wind facility, a wind manufacturing facility in Ontario. It took the, uh, our industry a little bit by surprise because nobody had ever heard of Samsung in the wind industry. They don't own any technology. They don't, they've never built a wind turbine. But they have a deal with Ontario. They have 1,500 megawatts of, of committed uh, uh, of, uh, power transmission capacity, which they control. So you can bet they're there will be something coming from that industry. This is where we talk about the vision part. I gave you two, two visions here, the 20 year vision first. Um, we, we, we really do think it's gonna be prevalent within our communities, solar in particular, rooftops are gonna have it. Um, uh, and this is, these numbers are for Ottawa Center, we did some work on that. Uh, it could easily be 10,000 deployments in 20 years. Um, certainly 50% of all of schools, churches, installations, and that's just copying what's happened in Germany. That's the, that's n this isn't really visioning anything new, it's just laterally transferring existing conditions from other countries. We certainly think that, that commercial and retail sector will have PV because there, there's a rate of return on it. So, you know, if you have the ability to borrow or, or invest in it, the rate of return is there, you might as well do it. On the, on the wind side, within the urban boundaries, wind is not as, uh, it's not as well priced from the, the point of view of the feed and tariff. It, we would ask it to be a higher price, but that could come uh, after some years of iteration. Currently, it is not. Um, so there, but therefore, people who deploy wind will probably do it more from a personal choice point of view rather than the actual return on investment decision. The type of machinery that you might see looks like that, which is a copy of the, the energy ball at the back comes in various sizes, that's the smaller size. Could easily sit on a roof, two and a half kilowatts. Absolutely no um, permitting requirements, just go put it on, doesn't make any noise. So it's, it's designed for urban environments. This is the type of thing we shall see quite prevalently. Um, I'm gonna itemize a few more changes here. In, in terms of building structures, we're gonna see, and this goes back 30 years, I mean, in my, in my college days we were talking about passive solar designs uh, but people are going to start doing that as they remodel buildings they're going to integrate PV into buildings now we have the chance to to buy materials that go on the outside called cladding materials or glass or, or glazing and it will have PV built in and you will not even be able to see it and I've, I've seen some some technology that's that's uh, very close to being commercially ready where 
it's a glass panel, and I don't see anything in it, but it actually does generate uh, PV power. So we could we could curtain wall every building with that type of, 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 of material. So that's going to, I mean, this is a 20-year vision, but we know the product is there now. Integrated concrete form construction, it's it's out. It's People are using it now. We're going to start seeing that in, in lots of construction situations, triple pane windows, radiant heating. These are not new technologies. It's just that it's going to happen more prevalently. We, why? Because we need to conserve energy. Or in some cases, as I said with PV, it's not only just conserving, it's create energy in the building. 